Hello, everybody. This is my first video. I'm sure they'll get better as I go. How do you like the shop? No, I'm not at school. Wish I was. Power of virtual reality. Today, we're going to talk about wheel alignment, the types of wheel alignment, and just the basic alignment angles. Okay, basic alignment angles and the types of wheel alignments. We certainly don't want our vehicles looking like this. Or this. That's a lot better. Nice professional all wheel alignment. That's what we're looking to achieve. So the types of wheel alignment, we have two wheel alignment where you would put the heads from the alignment machine on just the front tires and align them to each other. That is not a very popular alignment anymore. Back in the day, that was all they did, but with all of our modern technology and understanding of vehicles, it's basically obsolete. A thrust angle alignment, number two, is where we would align the front wheels to the rear wheels, such as on a, on a pickup truck or something like that with a live rear axle, and we would um, put the heads on all four tires and align the front tires or wheels assemblies to the rear wheels. All wheel alignment is the modern alignment we've been doing for years. That's what we want to concentrate on, where we actually adjust the rear wheels and the front wheels. So all of the tires and wheels on the car are going in the right direction. Primary, um, a lot, two types of alignment angles, I'm sorry. Um, the primary alignment angles that we can adjust, which are caster, camber, toe, thrust angle, and thrust angle on a four wheel alignment. So we can actually ad adjust the thrust angle, which has to do with adjusting the rear wheels, which we'll get to that in a bit. The secondary alignment angles are the diagnostic angles where we can locate a bent component or something like that on a vehicle. Toe out on turns, steering axis inclination or included angle, um, scrub radius, thrust angle on a live rear axle, live rear axle such as a pickup truck where there are no adjustments. If that's off, something bad happened. The axle is bent, the springs are, um, bushings are bad, or someone put the springs on wrong, something like that. There's definitely some kind of physical problem with the vehicle. So the primary alignment angles are the ones we're gonna concentrate on in this video, which are caster, camber, toe, and thrust angle as it applies to four wheel alignments. Caster is the vertical tilt of the steering axis as opposed to vertical. If our upper ball joint is straight up and down with our lower ball joint, it is said to have zero degrees, caster. If the upper ball joint is behind the lower ball joint, so the axis is tilted back towards the center of the vehicle, it would be positive caster. If our upper ball joint, strut assembly, that kind of thing, are pointed forward of vertical, then that towards the front of the vehicle, that is said to have negative caster. All of our angles are compared uh, to straight up. The definition, position of the upper ball joint compared to the lower ball joint, also the upper A-arm, lower A-arm, or the strut assembly, the forward or rear tilt of the steering axis as compared to vertical. Here's a little bit of a breakdown. If my upper ball joint compared to my lower ball joint or upper A-arm to lower A-arm or the top half of my strut assembly is straight up and down vertical, it would be zero degrees or neutral caster. If my upper pivot point, ball joint, A-arm, strut assembly is behind the lower one towards the center of the vehicle, like a motorcycle fork, that would be positive caster. If my upper ball joint is forward ahead of my lower ball joint, such as in a shopping cart, that would be negative caster. And I'm sure you've pushed a shopping cart too fast in the store and saw how the casters tend to wobble. We don't want that to happen on a vehicle, so most of our vehicles are gonna have positive caster. Um, alignment angles, for example, a positive caster on a minivan are around one and a half degrees from vertical, so it will be tilted back one and a half degrees. 
on a Cadillac CTSV, such as the red one we have in our shop at school, uh, it would be six and a half degrees. It's going to require a little bit more steering effort, which we'll learn about later, but it also gives us more return to center and uh, it keeps the car going in a straight line. Camber. Camber is the inward or outward, outward tilt of the wheel as compared to vertical. So vertical will be straight up and down. So if the um, tire is straight up and down through the center line of the vehicle, it's zero degrees camber. If the top of the wheel is pointed out, it's positive camber. If the top of the wheel is pointed in, it's negative camber. Same thing on the opposite side. If they're tilted out, it's positive camber. If they're tilted in, it's negative camber. Now that can also apply to rear wheels as well. Here's another picture that shows the top of the wheel pointing out, which is positive camber. And this one shows the top of the wheel pointing in, which is negative camber. Toe. Toe is the inward outward, outward angle of the tire as compared to being parallel with the center line of the vehicle. So if I were to draw, if I can, a straight line, this is going to be good, to the center of the vehicle, like so, we would be comparing the front of the tire and the rear of the tire to being parallel with this line in the center of the vehicle. I'll turn on my spotlight here, so hopefully you can see this a little better. We'll be comparing the front of the tire and the rear of the tire distance to the center line of the vehicle. So if the front of the tires are pointing in, that's going to be toe in or positive toe. If the front of the tires are pointing out, that's going to be toe out or negative toe. The same thing can happen to the rear wheels. The, if the tires are pointed in, it will be positive toe. If the tires are pointed out, it will be negative toe. And we'll reference rear toe as we talk about thrust angle um, in a couple of slides. Um, back to, I'm going to back up just a minute. Um, wear on tires, as far as tires wearing out and what it's going to, what a wear indication would look like on a wheel. If with camber, the, if I had negative camber, the top of the tire pointing in, my tire would wear smoothly on the inside of the tire. If my top of my tire was pointed out or I have positive camber, all your weight is going to be applied to the outside edge of the tire. So that tire is going to wear smoothly on the outside edge of the tire. As I scroll to toe, if the tires are pointing in, the tires are going to scuff on an angle and they're going to tend to wear the outside edge of the tire and that would be a feathered wear. On camber, you're gonna have smooth wear. On toe, you're gonna to have feathered wear. You would run your hand back and forth across the tire. It'll feel smooth going one way and jagged going the other. Please be careful when you run your hands across the tires. Check to make sure that the steel cords aren't protruding through the tread because it will cut your fingers like razor blades right to the bone, pretty dangerous. So do a visual inspection on the tire before you start rubbing your hands across them. Okay, here's another view of positive toe from the top, the tires are pointing in, and here's another view of negative toe where the tires are pointing out. Same thing on the rear, if the rear tires are pointing out, it's negative, if the rear tires are pointing in, it's positive toe. There's your definitions, positive toe pointing in, negative toe is if they point out. How I remember it is positive toe pointing in, and I remember my toes pointing in, I point my feet inward, it looks awful, but that's how if my toes are pointing in, it's positive because I have all the, the P's, the positive pointing, toes pointing in, positive. So, and then negative is just the opposite. Okay, rear toe effect, or what we call thrust angle. And I'm gonna need to delete this line, which I just did, hmm, lucky. I'm gonna draw, um, let me get these boxes in here first so you can see them. Hope. It was going so well. There we go. Okay. Let's try that again. Sorry about the delay. 
This is my fifth time doing this. I want this one to work. <laughs> okay, so now back to spotlight at first. If my rear tires are pointing forward, then I'm gonna have zero or no thrust angle. Once again, I'm gonna draw lines across these cars if I can make this happen. So I have a straight line going through the middle of these vehicles. And we call that, it's an imaginary line that goes through the cars. And uh, we call that the thrust angle. The I'm sorry, we call that the center line of the vehicle. So everything that's gonna be compared to the center line as far as toe. Okay, now, if my tires are pointing straight parallel to my center line of my vehicle in the rear, then I have no zero degrees or no thrust angle, okay? If I have my tires are pointing to the left of the vehicle, such as this way here, then that's going to be a left thrust angle. And what's going to happen is the rear of the car is going to head this direction. Now, that's going to cause something which is, um, let me draw this is going to show the angle this way. The rear of the tires are going to go to the to the left. We call that left thrust angle. The rear of the wheel vehicle is thrusting to the left. Now, what that's going to do, this actually going to cause a pull. Whoops, I used the wrong line here. Let me stick that right there. It's going to cause a pull to the left. I'm sorry, pull to the right. Because as the rear of the tire, rear of the car, goes to the left, it rear steers the car around to the right, okay? I think I'm getting better at these things. On a right thrust angle, my tires are pointing to the right, then that's going to give me a thrust angle right, or it's gonna cause my vehicle then to pull to the left as it rear steers my car around that way. How you would notice that is when you let go from the steering wheel, the car, in this case, if, the, if we have right thrust angle, it's gonna to pull to the left. And in this case, if I have left, left thrust angle, it's gonna to pull to the right. Believe it or not, most of our pulls on front wheel drive vehicles, if it's not a bad tire, it typically is the rear toe because the rear toe alignment is out of spec specifications and we have a thrust angle left to right and it causes the vehicle to pull. And a lot of people kind of, disregard the rear toe alignment and it's really super important as far as directional stability for a vehicle. Now I'm going to elaborate just a little bit farther on this thrust angle. The thrust angle ends up going to whichever side is worse. So um, let me erase a couple things here. So if I have for instance the left rear tire is straight ahead straight as I can make it, and the right rear tire is pointing left, I'm still going to have a left thrust angle, okay? Now, if my left rear tire was pointing to the right, worse, this is gonna be extreme, worse than the right rear tire, then my thrust angle is gonna be whichever one points the, the farthest out of whack compared to the vehicle uh, thrust line or center line. So this vehicle then would, the rear end would thrust to the right, which would cause it to pull to the left. So that would happen um, the opposite direction as well. So the vehicle's thrust angle is gonna be toward whichever rear tire is the farthest out of specification. And then your pull is going to be related to which way the car is rear steering. Get rid of all these lines on here. Let's see if we can get it to advance to the next slide. So make sure I didn't miss anything. There we go. In review, we have two types of alignment angles. We have our primary alignment angles, which we just discussed, which are adjustable, caster, camber, toe, and thrust angle. And we'll talk about how we adjust those angles a couple of videos on down the road as, uh, as we learn more about the angles. We'll, we'll also, um, I'll show you pictures and things of how you would actually adjust uh, each one of those angles. Um, we'll give you samples on a few different vehicles. 
the non-adjustment angles or our diagnostic angles where we're noticing something bent, something that needs to be replaced on a vehicle is going to be um, tow out on turns, which we'll talk about um, in our next video. We're gonna cover uh, secondary alignment angles, tow out on turns, steering axis inclination and included angle, scrub radius, um, and our thrust angle for a live rear axle as far as diagnosing something that's bent or uh, mispositioned uh, in the vehicle. So we covered primary angles, caster, camber, toe, and thrust angle. Next time, we're gonna focus on the diagnostic angles, which are toe on turns, steering axis inclination, scrub radius, and thrust angle. The end for now, it's always the end for now. There's always new information coming up. Thank you for, thank you for hanging out with me today, and hopefully there'll be more to come. Have a great day.